Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this excellent Thursday. See, I'll give it a name now. Excellent Thursday. Because it ain't been too bad. It ain't been, no, it ain't been a too bad day. I know some of you, it's still quite early. For me, it's coming to an end. And this is video three of three, as we have just looked at some whys. Why Brian Koberger did the things he did. Why Kaylee and Maddie may or may not have likely been targeted. Was Maddie indeed the primary target? And that brings us to this three video series, if you like, to be concluded. Because I feel that this, even though this entire crime was tragic, a huge, huge tragedy... I feel that this poor couple, Ethan and Zanna, can be looked at in one of two directions. Either this was the biggest tragedy of them all, the biggest tragedy of them all, or the biggest catalyst to what happened, depending on how you want to look at it. So let's look at number one, and that is that like we said in video two, the primary target on this night was Madison Mogan. She had been stalked online, potentially been involved in other things. Who knows? There's been things put forward, but we're not 100% sure. But she was the target. Kaylee was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And again, kind of potentially collateral damage. And then you've got a situation where Ethan and Zanna are in their room underneath and they hear what is going on and they come out to see what is going on obviously Dylan Mortensen doesn't she's doing her own thing but Ethan and Zanna come out and there is an altercation we've heard about that altercation and the fact that there was one hell of a fight put up a fight that they would ultimately go on to lose but that just simply makes these further just collateral damage. If they hadn't have heard anything, if they'd have been in a similar situation to Dylan Mortensen, where they just felt that there was perhaps other stuff going on, and they just stayed in their room, there's a potential that they would still be alive. If you believe that this was simply a collateral damage situation, where there was enough noise to rouse them, to bring them out of the room and then meet this person who perhaps tried to calm them down by saying, don't worry, I'm here to help, and would usher them back towards their room to try and make it look like they are getting them away from the danger. And then all of a sudden there is an attack. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. But if they're not collateral damage, sadly, Zana Canodal becomes the person who could have potentially been the biggest catalyst to what happened. And I don't mean by what she did herself, but just because of what was going on around her. It would appear that her mum, Cara Northington, was indeed, when it comes to the world of narcotics, the biggest connecting factor with the most involvement in that nefarious world. And that's not spitballing, that's not anything, that's fact. It is just fact. And we don't know how deep she was in it, but we know she was deep enough. We know it had destroyed her as a person and she had got herself in some serious, serious trouble. And we do not know whether that had spilled out into Zanna's world. Now, Steve Gonsalves can say all he wants that these, these kids, they don't have anything to do with that world. They don't mix in those circles. But by, <laughs> by contrast, you do, because you've got parents around you, family members around you who are deep in that world and that then makes you involved in that because you in some situation can become a bargaining chip or something that can be used to punish you when you don't do right and that then has to be a question as to whether an adult or somebody around these did something they shouldn't have done upset the wrong person and that then spilled out into 1122 King Road 
But that is just spitballing. You know, I'm just saying that with regards to why Ethan and Zanna can, again, be in two different directions, and that is that they were just wrong place, wrong time, collateral damage. And maybe the statement, I'm here to help you, clarifies that. Or indeed there was something else going on. Why did Zanna have her locks changed? Had she fallen out with the people in the house? Is it because she, her and Ethan were together, they thought lock the door, more privacy? Was she scared that something was going to get taken out of her room? Were there people around her that she just didn't trust? Who knows? If they all had locks, why weren't they locked that night? We've touched on this. Locks, but seemingly not one door was locked. Not one door seemed to have to be kicked in. Dylan would have heard that, surely. But let me know down below. We've looked at a few whys today. A few whys. But what is your biggest why? Is it why did Brian Koberger leave a life what seemingly was moving in a great direction and do this crime? Why did he go from a non-death penalty state to a death penalty state? Why did the crime happen on this night? Was it because Kaylee was there? And in fact, Kaylee was the target. And it needed to happen on this specific night. And is there a connection indeed to Steve Gonsalves' brother? Was this retaliation? Was Madison Mogan online? Did someone take a liking to her? And was she indeed the target? And the rest were collateral. Was Ethan and Zanna in the sanctuary of their room? And were they only killed because they were brave enough to come out and have a look? And again, was that phrase, I'm here to help you confirmation of such let me know down below what you think and again what's your biggest why i will catch you all in the next one